All right, in this video, we're going to go over the Bat Tactical Elite Action and why you might want to consider it for your next custom rifle. All right, so we get lots of questions on comparing the Bat Tactical Elite as well as the the igniter and the bumblebee. And we did a, a small video review on the bumblebee as well as the igniter going over some of the differences and where they sort of fit in this ecosystem, right? The one that we haven't done a video yet on is the Bat Tactical Elite. And I wanna go over some of the things as to why you may wanna consider it and why it actually exists, why we still use it today. So the original Bat Tactical Action started out in 2012 and that was a traditional 700 round with a built-in 20 MOA rail and lots of features that go through the entire bolt body and how they're built. And that started in 2012. Then that became what we call the BT Action, which was the predecessor to the igniter, which was a less expensive, lighter version that had the same features, 700 round, but a double pinned aluminum rail to save weight as well as to reduce the cost a little bit. And then Bat Machine came out with their newest action, the Bumblebee, which is an integral uh, Picatinny rail, integral recoil lug, uh, same bolt body, but really their ultra lightweight version. And so where this fits at in the system is this. When we designed the first one, it was a traditional 700 round. It sort of looked like the igniter now, but with a built-in 20 MOA steel rail machined into it. When we come out with the Elite version, which is the newer version that we offer, we actually machined flats into the side uh, for rigidity to make the action a little bit thicker. Uh, it adds some weight. It also has a built-in steel 20 MOA rail. So one of the things with the built-in 20 MOA rail and why you might want to consider it. Well, the first thing is it's not an accuracy thing. All of these actions will shoot exceptionally well. Um, the, the Bumblebee is very rigid with its design and the Remington 700 clone like this one with the built-in uh, recoil lug tried and proven a million times over. So a couple of things that this will do is one, when you have the, the rail built into the receiver, it allows it to set lower. So in other words, if you look at the igniter, for example, and you look at the rail that's on top, you'll see that the rail on this one on your left is much thicker than the rail that's on this one. The reason being is this is an aluminum rail and they have to have some, some depth to the actual rail itself to give it a good bite when they stick the screws and slot the screws down in. Of course, they have to be recessed. And then there has to be an area at the top for it to bite and pull down. And so these rails have to be a lot thicker because of the screws that have to go in them. So one of the advantages of having a machine in rail is that you can actually machine it part, but then you can also lower it on a receiver. And what that does is it lowers your scope a little bit more closer to the barrel. And in this case, it allows you to get it as close as possible with the appropriate rings without having it jacked up already in the back more than it has to be. The other thing is that this top steel strap does add a lot of rigidity to the actual receiver itself. Think about flexing and moving. So when you're hanging extremely heavy barrels, for example, this one is in a carbon fiber, but when you add a 0.9 muzzle or bigger 26 inch Krieger barrel to the end of this and a suppressor, that's a lot of weight pulling and flexing on the receiver itself and having a machined in rail helps to deal with that, adds rigidity to the receiver. And then the flats that are machined into it now, rather than a traditional round, well, that adds a little bit more material to it as well, stiffening up the action ever so slightly. The other thing that I would consider when purchasing or considering the Bat Tactical Elite Action is it's just less working parts. So one of the reasons why I choose to go with this on my tactical rifle is simply because we're, we're subtracting the number of working parts on the receiver itself. So for example, the, the rail is built into the receiver, so there's one less part that's machined and added. Uh, the two pins and four screws. So when you add all that together, you're removing seven working parts from the actual receiver itself. And less is better in this case. So you've got less screws to potentially loosen up or move, uh, all of that. So it eliminates a lot of additional parts to the receiver, making it in one piece. The other thing that I can say, and I can say this with absolute confidence, is 
So the other really nice thing about it, and it goes through with all of these, when you have a rail that's built in, especially the quality that these are in, is you can take the scopes on and off the rail. And to take and clean the rifle or to clean the optics, however you want to do it, and then you tighten it back onto the relative appropriate inch pounds. A lot of times, it doesn't change your point of impact. We've been doing that for more than a decade at our long range shooting school. Now, what makes the action shoot so well is the fact that they're held and built to all of Bat Machine's bench rest tolerances. And you would think that that would make an action bind. So you'll hear some people say with Bat Machine, well, you don't want a Bat Machine action because they're bench rest. And when you run those super tight tolerances, that's when the, the bolt will get sticky and bind through the receiver. But the truth of the matter is, it's actually the opposite that's true. You see, Bat Machine does not have an anti-bind rail or cut built into the actual bolt up here. So if you look at a Remington 700, you'll see that there's an actual little lip that runs along this side of the receiver. So when you slide the bolt in and out, it sort of rides on that second lip or what they call a bind rail, right? This does not have one simply because it doesn't need it. So when you take an action like this and you've got two and a half thousandths clearance of the bolt for a raceway, that's one and a quarter thousandths per side. In comparison, a human hair is three thousandths. So you've got one third the width or so of human hair clearance around the bolt body raceway. But the reason they don't bind and the reason they run so fast, so smooth, is because they can't shift or kick sideways as you're opening and closing the bolt through the receiver. So if I take the firing pin out of this and I just run this back and forth, it doesn't bind simply because it can't kick sideways in the receiver as I'm forcing the bolt close. So the mistake a lot of other action makers make is they'll leave seven to ten thousandths clearance total or three and a half to five thousandths per side. And what happens as they're pushing the bolt forward, they're kicking the bolt body off to the side, binding it because they're actually moving the bolt sideways and then they're trying to force it through this way and they'll cause the bolt to bind and stick and catch. So anyone who's ever ran a bad action or owns a bad action will tell you that they are the smoothest, fastest actions that they've ever owned. And we've never had a customer call and say otherwise. So when you go this route, you will absolutely not be disappointed. The truth of the matter is a lot of people have never really had the opportunity to run a bad action or to actually shoot one at the range or to see one or feel one. So we've taken a lot of time over the years to go to lots of different shows and events and, and say, look, if you get a chance to try one or talk to somebody that actually owns one, they are incredibly smooth, incredibly fast to run, and incredibly accurate. And one of the reasons why they're so accurate is because they're able to keep the bolt for raceway tight and they're able to keep a good lock up on both the lugs and the firing position. The other couple key features that you might want to consider, and, and this holds true to the rest of them, is again, BAT has a toolless feature for taking the firing pin out and cleaning it and wiping everything down. It also has an interchangeable bolt head, and so BAT did a really nice job of coming up with a design that you can actually take the bolt head on and off to change the actual uh, bolt face to a 223-3865 PRC, all that great stuff. So they, they added some, some options that allows you to change up the receiver maybe to what a future need might be. So you don't have to buy a complete bolt assembly now if you want to go to a PRC or, or have a 223 for a trainer. You can actually change up a couple parts and ready to go. So we don't build on any other actions. And it's not that we haven't seen them or touched them. As a gunsmith, I've built on about every action that's on the planet. And one of the things that really, I think, Bat Machine sets apart, and I'm talking about Bruce Thong, uh, the owner of Bat Machine, is their attention to detail. So we used to true a lot of Remington 700s. We would bring them up to this level to where they were incredibly shooting. We would tighten bolt for raceways. We would sleeve bolts, all these crazy gunsmithing things. When Bat does that, right out of the gate. All the things that we would do or things that need to be done to make a fantastic or awesome action or a world-class accurate receiver to build on, that is how they build all of their actions. And so why would we build on anything less than perfect? And I think that's really a testament to the quality of the work that they do, the attention to the detail that we just won't build with anybody else. I mean, that's just simply the way it is. There is bat machine than, of course, everybody else. And I'm not saying that every action out there is terrible. And I'm not saying that nobody else's actions are good. What I'm saying is we've chose to go with Bat Machine because they hold that level higher and more consistency, I think, than any other action maker out there. And a good testament to that would be King of Two Mile. 
So the bat actions actually dominate all of the ultra long or ELR type shooting. Uh, you'll see bat machine actions or receivers on almost all of those guns and they win in place in those matches beyond two miles all the time. That's really a testament to just how good they really are. So I hope it explains a little bit between the different receivers and why you might want to consider the Bat Tactical Elite uh, for your next rifle. I will tell you that the very first prototype the Bat Machine ever did in a Remington 700 clone, so they had a VR, they had a TR, and they had all these other receivers out there. We did a 700 clone with them, and I think in 2011 and 2012, the serial number 001 I took to the Allegheny Sniper Challenge in 2012. It was a prototype, and so it was really awesome to do. It was the very first clone that they made. We took it in uh, the Allegheny Sniper Challenge, which was shot in Seneca Rocks, West Virginia, and it was a three-day match. One of the commitments that I made in going to the match is that I wasn't going to clean anything on the bolt body, clean out the raceway, clean the rifle in any way, shape, or form, and see if I can't run in this match in three days in field conditions and not have any issues. And it did. It rained on us. Uh, we were shooting out of barns. Anyone who's ever shot ASC knows that it's a very dirty uh, environment. Your stuff is not going to stay very clean for very long. It is a three-day field match. One of the coolest things is I thought it did pretty well in the match. The last stage of the match was called Last Man Standing, where you had to engage a target. I think it was like 300 yards. Your teammate had a single feed. Uh, your your uh, your rifle, so it was meant to simulate you were out of rounds, and your teammate had to had to throw the the rounds in for you one at a time, and I believe you had 20 seconds. And in that particular stage, this was the last stage of the three day match, mind you, is I was able to get I believe eight rounds off in 20 seconds on target for points, and it was just a great way to end the match, and just showed how flawlessly the receiver ran. One of the coolest things is at the end of the match, I went down to congratulate the winner. I thought maybe I was in the top 10 or, you know, I thought I did pretty well, but normally I don't keep score of everybody there and I'm not watching my own score. I'm just there to shoot, throw my hat and ring, have fun. I ended up winning the match. Uh, that trophy I still have today. It was one of the proudest wins I've ever had because it, it was done with a prototype receiver um, that was a bat tactical action and to run it through a three-day match the first time through and actually win the match was just really special to me so it was really cool so again if you have any questions on the receivers you're more than welcome to give us a call uh, you're more than welcome to talk to us and if you get a chance and you're ever out at any matches and you, and you see somebody running the bad action ask them what they think of it if you get a chance to shoot it to run and, and, and put a magazine through it. Really check it out because I think you'll find that it's probably going to be the smoothest action you'll ever run. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. We really appreciate it. Hopefully it answered some questions on some of the differences in the receivers that we offer here for sale. And if you get a chance, get out there, get your hands on a bat and give it a try. I think you'll actually be very pleasantly surprised on just how smooth and fast they really are. Thanks for watching.